ever, did you like your midwives at all or? Um, okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so nice to finally meet you. You as well. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited to have you. You honestly look very similar to how you looked during your birth. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Did you plan that at all? Did you plan to like look a certain way for your birth video or? Uh, well, actually, yeah, my water broke the night before I actually delivered. So I had some time to do my makeup. <laughs> yeah, me too. I always plan to do my makeup while I'm having my births, which yeah. is, it's not a bad thing because you know, you're going to look back on the video and you kind of want to have a video that you want to remember, you know? <laughs> yeah. That you say like, you know, at least I looked good. Yeah. Like you had a really interesting story. You have four babies. A lot of them are back to back. One of them you had three months after, correct? Yes. <laughs> and you had an induction, you had a few epidurals. So what was the deciding factor between those birth stories to making you want to have a home birth this time? Um, well, I wanted to have a home birth with my third baby, my son, um, but I was too afraid. There's a lot of fear when it comes to the topic of home birth. Yeah. So, you know, I chickened out and I ended up going to the hospital and I was induced with him at 39 weeks. And then um, I was sitting in the hospital bed and I remember screaming while they were trying to put the epidural because my contractions were so strong and I felt his head. And I was telling them, they were like, you need to sit still or we can't do it. And I was like, I cannot sit still. And um, I mean, I'm sitting here in tears telling them I need to push and no one was taking me seriously. So I laid down and I said to my husband, put your hands here because I'm pushing. And I remember seeing the nurse talking to the anesthesiologist and the doctor wasn't even in the room and I started pushing. Wow. So, I mean, that's something you can't stop. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so when the nurse heard me pushing, then she turned around and she called the doctor and then they, they came in because the head was like out. So I was just like, you know what? I didn't even get my epidural. No one listened to me. I should have just delivered at home. So then I said, with my fourth baby, I'm going to do a home birth and I'm going to, you know, research from the beginning a good practice that's going to make me feel safe doing this. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't even turn back. There was just, the hospital was not an option. Wow. You guys know our videos are always sponsored by my website, valibu.com, where you can get beautiful birth plans that help you to give you the confidence of your birth and help to communicate your wishes to your birth team. I have created hundreds of birth plans for the moms on YouTube, on Instagram, and we have different templates that you can choose from. And we also have very great reviews. So if you're interested in that, you can use the code QUEEN, Q-U-E-E-N, to get 15% off when you shop. Let's go back to your third birth. I feel like that decision to say no at the hospital, it's a very hard decision for moms to make. What gave you the courage to this time just be like, you know what? you need to wait or let me wait it out. Let me see if I can handle it myself. Um, well, my whole thing with even delivering at a hospital is getting that epidural. I got it with my first two. So I planned to get it with my third. And when I didn't even get it and I felt like what I was afraid of feeling, I was like, okay, like I got this, I already did it. So I'm going to, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna deliver at home. I'm not repeating this situation where they don't take me seriously. And my only fear really was the pain. 
So if I already dealt with it, I'm going to be fine dealing with it again. So, I mean, I mean, I just stuck with it. Wow. That's good. I feel like that was probably your gut telling you that you can do it. And it's kind of nice that you got to experience both worlds because now you're kind of like a living testimony of what it was like to have an epidural versus what it was like to not have one. So you can kind of share your experience to both people like who are thinking about making that decision. So that's kind of cool. Tell me about this thing that you said. So in one of your videos, when you were talking about your birth stories, you said that you got your water broken and it just felt completely different than your regular natural contractions. And you said that it felt like a chainsaw to (laughs) to your stomach. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, first of all, it feels like they're sticking a tool, like a hook inside of you and like popping it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's just crazy. And then after that, it was kind of like your body is just like, what just happened? So I feel like maybe those contractions are a little bit more insane. And because I, two births before that had epidural, I kind of like took the edge off. Like I didn't feel those contractions. So when I felt like those real ones, like, okay, head is coming. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, I was completely, it was, it was a chainsaw. (laughs) And then, so I kind of, I mean, my body went through it. So when it came time for my fourth, when I was in my house, I prepared for that. That was just like, okay, it's about to feel crazy. And I mean, it did. It didn't feel like a chainsaw this time. It just kind of felt like your whole body just, I was on my knees. So it was just pressure. Yeah. The natural contractions are a lot more, they kind of gradually get more intense. Whereas the one, because I had my water broken before, and it definitely is a more unnatural experience. So mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of the times moms, they get their waters broken just because they don't know the, pre, the, the precautions or what can happen after you get your water broken. Like we yeah. don't really talk about, you know, if you do it, the contractions are gonna be worse. You know, yeah. you just think that if I get my water broken, things are gonna progress faster. So you're thinking, mm-hmm. yep, let me get my water broken. Things are gonna go faster. But what actually ends up happening is the contractions become a little bit more uncomfortable and then you're uncomfortable and the baby can feel that and sense that. And so the heart rate can drop or I'm happy that you went through your experiences and then you finally led you to your home birth. Um, But before we even get to your home birth story, you had a hemorrhage with your first baby, your postpartum hemorrhage correct? Yes. So I know a lot of moms are dealing with that fear of an anxiety, like they've experienced that and they want to have a home birth, but they've had postpartum hemorrhage, like in their previous births. So what gave you the confidence to feel inside you that you could still have a home birth, even though you knew you had experience with that previously? Um, so when I hemorrhaged, I was three days postpartum. I already was sent home by the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, and then with my second and third, I didn't hemorrhage at all. So then it's kind of just something that like, no matter where you are home or hospital, it's, if it's going to happen, it's not something that, you know, you can see coming. It just happens. And it ended up actually happening again to me, seven days mm-hmm. postpartum. And I didn't even have a blood transfusion or anything. It's kind of just like, you know, your uterus isn't contracting yeah. at, you know, as fast as it should be or whatever. So it's just one of those things that it doesn't matter if you were home or if you were at the hospital, like, because I got sent home mm-hmm. from the hospital, my bleeding was normal. And then all of a sudden overnight, it just got heavy and I just had to go back. So, I mean, that kind of is just something that is not relevant to your, you know, environment of birthing. So I was just like, you know, that's not going to hold me back. I get what you're saying. Basically, you're saying anything could happen regardless of where you are. At the end of the day, pick the environment that works best for you. Yeah. And so you did. But did you regret it at all after knowing that you hemorrhaged for the fourth baby? No, honestly, I don't know what did it. Like the doctors don't even know really when I was asked, I was like, why does this even happen? It's kind of just like, it just does. We don't know. 
So I have a theory and I was not resting after I delivered. So those seven days I was up, I was cleaning. I, you know, I had stopped breastfeeding my baby like after day three, cause I was my, you know, my hormones make me crazy. So I was like, oh, I'm not giving enough attention to my other ones. Cause I'm just sitting here on the couch all day long breastfeeding. So like, I'm just gonna do it like morning and night and bottle feed throughout the day. So when I started doing that, then my uterus, you know, all of a sudden these first couple of days I was breastfeeding my uterus, it helps, you know, contract. And mm -hmm. then I stopped all of a sudden like that cold Turkey. And then it was like, I feel like I threw my body off maybe. And with not resting, and then I needed to go back to the hospital just to get like Pitocin. So my uterus could continue contracting. And then after that, I was like, okay, I got to breastfeed again. Um, so I, I I don't know what it was that caused it, but I think it could have been that. So this time I, I do it again, it's gonna be differently. I'm going to breastfeed and not stop just to help the uterus a little bit. Okay. And I guess another thing is rest, right? Because moms, I'm guilty of it too. You're a mom of four, so I can only imagine like the kids are always demanding your attention. And so- okay we want to do it all, but it's like, sometimes we just have to take those few weeks and just rest because it'll be worth it. It's so hard, but I know. Just have to do <laughs> were you hesitant at all when you decided to post your birth vlog or were you just like, I'm doing this, like I'm confident in it? I was hesitant to post it. I actually, it took me months to like be like you know because at first I was just like this is so intimate this is like my thing like I don't want to post it out there and everybody see me birth but then I started thinking like there are so many women out there that are so fearful of home births and just uh, there's a lot of people putting fear in women mm -hmm. so I'm just like you know what like this is a success story honestly like regardless of what happened seven days later like my home birth was a success my baby and myself we were healthy and I wouldn't trade that experience like I wouldn't go back and be like I wish I did it differently absolutely not so I said I'm posting this and I hope that people see this as like you know inspiration like there shouldn't be fear it, you know it's painful you I was definitely screaming my head off in the video but that moment you don't even remember that like that yeah. moment passes and then you have your baby in your arms and it's just like, okay, it's done, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, I need to post this for like women out there who are thinking about having a home birth, but they're afraid. There's nothing really to be afraid of. Yes. Well, thank you so much for posting it because it definitely inspired a lot of people. And what was beautiful about your birth is, you know, when um, people post birth videos and it says raw and real? Yeah. Yours was the real raw and real. <laughs> it was as raw and real as it can get. Like you had your kids in the beginning, like trying to figure out like the show that they were putting on and stuff. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then you even showed um, birthing the placenta too. You didn't mute any of your vocals. So it really gave moms the ability to see what birth truly looks like. And even for moms who've already birthed, it reminded them of what they went through too. It's like, yep, yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. It's not, it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So your midwives, that's one thing that I wanted to ask you about. Was there, did you like your midwives at all or... Um, okay, so the practice had like four midwives and I liked two of them. And the one that I really wanted, she was at another birth. So I got stuck with the one I didn't like. Yeah. But I feel like that always I mean, happens. Like right. I mean, you still you still got your baby at the end. Yeah. But it was it was a little bit tough watching at certain parts just because. I felt like there was a disconnect between you and your midwife. And Absolutely. Yeah. And then I wanted to know how you felt when she put the baby over and then she was tapping the baby on the back. And her little head down for a second. Come on. 
instead of like deep circular motions to help the breathing mechanism start. And as a midwife, she should have known that. So how did you feel like, were you, were you, did you have enough energy during that time to notice that she was a bit off or was it when you were watching it back to realize like, Hey, what were you doing? Oh yeah. Like, okay. So when I was in labor, first of all, I gave her my birth plan like three weeks before my labor. So she knew what I wanted on my birth plan. I literally wanted everything like unassisted. I kind of just wanted her to step in once the baby came out to like help my husband catch it because he was supposed to catch it. And um, I think that I didn't realize the things that she did that really bothered me until after when I watched the video. And even till this day, like I watch it and I'm just like, oh my God, I didn't even realize that. Like that bothers me. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in labor, one thing that bothered me that she was doing, and honestly, when you are having a home birth, you want it to be a peaceful environment and everybody to follow your birth plan because of it, why are you even birthing at home then? You could just yeah. go to a hospital where they take over. So like she, one of the things was I wanted my kids around. She kept trying to have my husband have my daughter sit down or go upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give us one, yeah, one word, one word contraction. And they almost missed it when she yes. set them up. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm kind of like, uh, hello, like my kids keep me sane. They keep me calm. They keep me happy. Like my daughter, she was four. She was holding my hand through my contractions. Wow. That helped me. Like I need them here. Mm -hmm. And she kept trying to send them away. That was bothering me. And then after the baby was born, she was, um, first of all, I was scared because my baby wasn't, she looked like she was struggling, struggling a little bit. And she's like, no, the baby's fine. And then like a little bit after she grabs her and then taps yeah. her in the back. Like, but I told you like- you But know, you I, said it was fine at first, yeah. Yeah, that's, so that was like, okay. But I was too exhausted and like to notice these things. One thing that I noticed when I was watching it afterwards was that they she took the baby from me and passed her to my husband and then helped me out of the pool and helped me get on the couch don't worry about that little cleanse that doesn't hurt anything awesome are you in shock yeah you for yourself <laughs> but then never give me my baby back so I was kind of just on the couch like while everybody else my you know my my in-laws and everybody like oh my god the baby over here in this corner I'm left alone on the couch in pain when that time is supposed to be where I latch the baby on I yeah. bond Mm -hmm. that that really bothered me yeah but again I noticed till afterwards I mean it's bittersweet because you did I mean like every birth is not 100% perfect but there's like a lot of perfection in your birth and there's a little things that you can probably tweak that I don't necessarily know if you're hoping to have another baby so. <laughs> it's crazy we we actually are really oh my god no way so you have three girls right yeah one and boy. one boy so baby boy or we hope yeah we hope a boy interesting <laughs> wow you talked a lot about your kids being with you and how you said that it helped to keep you sane and that's something that i can definitely relate with because for me that was something that i truly wanted in all my births as well my kids to be involved and be able to witness their baby brother come into the world. And I noticed that in the comments, some people feel that it's a traumatic experience for kids to witness birth. So what would you say to people who feel like that's a bit too much for a child? Um, I, I mean, I get their point of view because before I became a parent, 
I, and I, you know, I never experienced birth before. I was kind of like, oh my God, like who would have their kid in there? Cause it's super traumatic. Mm-hmm. But after experiencing birth, it's not, it's not, it's a beautiful thing. And if you, like me, I prepared my kids, my whole pregnancy, they named their baby sister. They were there through the ultrasounds. So I just, I mean, I watched birth videos with them and they were excited. I feel like if I got the sense or any vibe that my kid was afraid, I wouldn't have them there. But because there was no fear, my kids were like trying to jump in the pool with me. (laughs) (laughs) They were just like, uh, you know, before I even went into labor, like, I think baby sis is going to come tomorrow. I think she- <laughs> so like, like, why take, why put them somewhere else? Like, why not have them be a part of it? And, you know, my, like I said, my baby, she was four years old. She was holding my hand through my contractions and like jumping up and down. And after the baby was born, they cut the cord. And till this day, like, they remember they don't remember the whole thing but like sometimes they'll you know say to me like oh you know baby sis was born in the pool and they'll say things like that and it's Mm -hmm. beautiful to me like it's not something like I said if your kid is showing signs that like you know they're not interested or they're afraid then obviously don't have them around but that was the case for me like (laughs) my kids literally wanted to be in the pool with me (laughs) I really, really loved how you showcased it. You didn't cut it out. You kept it very, very real. And it's very, very inspiring. So you said that you're going to be planning, well, maybe hoping for baby number five. So if you could plan the perfect birth, what would it look like? Um, Okay, so I have already started trying to conceive. So we're hoping (laughs) I'll, I'll... probably know this weekend but um (laughs) so my perfect delivery would be okay uh, I've been going back and forth with this for a while like because I just kind of am wanting epidural but then after talking about it it's the reality is I may not even have the chance to get it anyway so just prepare for a calm environment and calm birth so I don't think I would deliver in a pool again. I think I want to be in my bed and I want like my kids in the bed with me and everybody, like I want my mom, my sisters, everybody there. Um, especially with COVID, you, you don't have that opportunity unless you're home. Like the hospital doesn't allow people yeah. like that. So that would be like my perfect delivery, like in my bed with my midwife nearby, not touching me. <laughs> <laughs> with me my mom my sisters everybody that I love around me and once the baby is out placed on my chest I don't have to you know move from a pool to a bed or anything so the baby doesn't have to go to anybody else and you know no complications afterwards obviously but yeah definitely in my home in my bed awesome well you already have your vision laid out I'm sure you'll be able to get that vision going when you do have that birth make sure you let us know so we can definitely follow that story yeah I will definitely I'll post it (laughs) okay (laughs) Alrighty. thank you so much can you let everybody know where to find you yeah so my YouTube channel is Yami Bella just like that um and yeah I I posted my for home birth on there and I'm starting to post my trying to conceive journey and I'm going to post everything else on there as well. Nice. Awesome. And your Instagram as well? It's underscore Yami Bella. Awesome. All right. That is it. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. You and too. Guess- <laughs> and we'll keep in touch online. Yeah, we will. Thank you. You're welcome. I think birth is like an evolution. Every single birth she got better and better and then you can definitely do that too so even if you had a birth that you know you don't feel that 100 percent happy about 
maybe the next one you'll feel a lot better as long as you plan and you prepare and you execute. Alrighty guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to this channel, I want you to click that red juicy button down below. Down below, it says subscribe. It says subscribe. <laughs>